Hi, this is Debbie Sementelli with DebbieSementelli.com. I'm a font designer, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to work with open type features in Microsoft Word 2010 and above. Now I'm working with the 2011 version. I'm about to update to the 2019. So either way, you'll be able to find the typography feature on any of the versions 2010 and above. And if you go up to the top menu, the home menu, you'll see in the middle here, it shows typography. Now, on the 2019 version, it looks a little bit different, and I'll show you a screenshot of what that looks like. If you can't find the typography section at all, you simply go up to Word in the upper left corner, go to Preferences, and then under Personal Settings, Ribbon, and you'll see this middle section and the box that says Typography, and you just check that, and then you would click OK. Another way that you can find the typography information is to go up to Format, Font, and you'll see the font box appear, and you can go to Advanced, and here's where you have all of your features. So you have kerning, which you want to definitely check to make sure that the letters are connecting properly. And I just set it at one point and above. It will change according to the point size of the font you're using, but for now, I'll just set it to one. And then ligatures, you would want to turn on standard and contextual. I'm leaving it on none because I'm demonstrating. And then if you go down to stylistic sets, you can see the number of stylistic sets in a font. And again, I wouldn't click on any one of them in particular, and I'm going to show you why. So we would normally just click OK. So let's work through all of the open type features in Word. So I'm going to be referring to the typography box. And again, in the 2019 version, it might look a little bit different. But basically, we first want to start out making sure that the kerning is checked. So this little box is for kerning, and I've got it checked, and I make sure to highlight before I check that box. Now we're going to go up to the capital A just above it, and this is contextual alternates. What contextual alternates are, are letters that are used in different contexts. And in my fonts, I usually create contextual alternates for ending letters so that they look more natural. For instance, if you look at this S and this D, when we naturally write at the end of a word, we don't typically continue with the connecting stroke. So I'm turning on contextual alternates, and you'll see that some of these ending letters are changing. I'm going to tell you right now, sometimes, I don't know why, in Word, not all the letters change. You can see the E here changes, but the E on the, um, on the end of love does not change. I have no idea why. <laughs> I think that's just a little thing in Microsoft Word. But basically, that is what the contextual alts are for. Now let's look at ligatures. So the ligatures are highlighted in yellow, and when I go to Standard and Contextual, you'll see the changes. So you'll notice the L's have changed, the TH has changed, the T now crosses in and creates the H. There are two different looking O's in the double O combination, and in the F, you'll notice that the second F is higher here and here, which is the natural way your eye moves, and so it's more pleasing to your eye. So it's good to turn on standard and contextual because you never know when contextual alternates might be available in a font. All of these things are programmed in by the font designer, so not every font is going to have all of these features, but they are in all of mine. Now let's go to historical and discretionary. 
And when I click on that, you'll see the double L changed, the TH changed again. Again, we had the double F change. And that's just another option if you want to do something a little bit more fancy or different. But we're going to go back to standard and contextual. So that explains ligatures. Now let's go to stylistic sets. Now, if you remember before, if you have this font box enabled and you see it says stylistic sets and there's an option here for the different sets, well, you don't want to turn them all on because you'll notice that if I do that, everything gets a little bit crazy. Okay, so instead, we want to start with the default and we want to go and just change the letters that we think would work well in the design. So let's take this capital L. So I can make many different changes. And I want to show you something that's a really special feature. So I've got this special L. It has the little heart shape there. And it has this extended flourish. Now, if you notice, you've got a clash there with the T. But what I've done to resolve that problem is I've created a crossless T. So you simply highlight the T and go into stylistic sets, and you'll find the crossless T here. And now the flourish becomes the crossbar for the T. So in addition, you can go on any letter. I'm highlighting the D, and let's say I want something to come below it, or maybe highlight this D. I want something to come above it. So you can just literally go through letter by letter, but you don't want to over flourish something because that's just got too much going on and it's really not pleasing to the eye. But you get the idea. There's lots of alternates in this particular font. Hello My Love font has 1985 glyphs, which is a very large font. So that gives you lots of stylistic alternates and lots of choices for all of the letters. Now let's take a look at this beginning swash F. You might think that that is one connected letter, but it's not. This is actually one of my ornaments. So as you can see, this is a user guide for the Hello My Love ornaments. There are 91 ornaments, and any of these can be used in combination to make a beautiful wedding suite or branding for any event. But for now, we're going to go to the second page of ornaments, and you'll see from the exclamation point all the way over to the plus sign, there are four different beginning swashes in three different sizes. So I can change this very easily, and I just simply eliminate that space and it's connected. And you can connect these swashes to any letter that you like. They all work with the swashes. So that's just another special feature that I added to the font to just make it more usable for you. Now let's talk about Roman numerals. I know there's a lot of people that use Roman numerals in their last names. And so if you are creating a wedding invitation or perhaps you have a guest list with lots of Roman numerals in the last name, you want to be able to have those printed on your envelopes or printed on your invitation. So what I've done is I've created a stylistic set that includes all of the Roman numerals from 1 to 10. And so if you have Mr. and Mrs. John Smith the sixth, you can simply go up here and just pull down on this menu and you'll see the sixth. And now once I've got that selected, I can actually type in any number that I need and it will automatically change to the correct Roman numeral. So that is how you use open type features in Microsoft Word in 2010 and later. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to help you out.